Well, what a load of rubbish that was. Cannot actually believe the level of performance that we've all just had to watch there. Anyway, guys, it's Charlie here from Chatting Leeds, back with another video. It's your West Ham review. Obviously, Leeds United losing out 3-1 at the London Stadium, which all but confirms our relegation to the Championship, in my opinion, and a lot of your opinions as well. Really cannot see how on the final day we are going to get out of this. It's in Everton's hands now. And I thoroughly believe Everton will beat Bournemouth next week, which means regardless of what happens at Ellen Road, we will go down. Um, that level of performance was not good enough at all. But just before we get into it, if you can muster up the effort and the, the energy, smash a like on the video. It really helps get it out there and get more eyes onto the channel. Please subscribe if you're brand new as well. Hit that notification bell, of course, and obviously get... All of your thoughts, your opinions, your rants, your frustrations in the comment section down below. I mean, it was just the story of our season, wasn't it, in a nutshell? Um thought we started off the game quite brightly. The lineup was as predicted, in, in my opinion. Um, start the game off quite well. I think West Ham was slow to get into the game. Um, which we'd seem to be taking advantage of. Where I thought Bamford, obviously he ended up going off injured, didn't he? But for the time that Bamford was on the pitch, I thought he was good. I thought he was getting in behind them quite well. He was holding up the ball quite well. But again, no one supporting him really to offer that help up top. Um, and you could just tell, couldn't you, that once, once Bamford went off, the ball just didn't seem to stick. Um, we're hoofing balls up to Rodrigo when he can't compete with their tall centre halves. Um, and obviously, prior to Bamford going off injured, obviously, Leeds United took the lead um, through Rodrigo. It was from a Western McKenney long throw, um, a good volley from Rodrigo to make it 1 0. But again, story of our season, we score. And then we just stopped playing football, it, it seems. Um, I, I feel like the, the game plan was to hopefully go in front and then just sit back and just invite pressure, which I think is absolutely bizarre. Um, like I say, I thought first 20 minutes, Leeds United were the better team. We took the lead and rightfully so. But then we just let West Ham grow with confidence. We let them get on the ball more. They were passing it around at will. They didn't really get out of first gear. Then they equalised through Declan Rice, of all people, on probably his last home game for West Ham. He equalises, and then from then, from then on in, it was just all West Ham, wasn't it? It was just all West Ham. We didn't get a sniff for the rest of the first half and the whole of the second half. But at least at half-time, you're thinking it's one all. A good team talk. At half time, maybe some correct substitutions, and you know, hopefully Leeds United could could nick a winner. Like I said in the the preview and in the match day thoughts live stream this morning, it doesn't really matter about the level of performance as long as Leeds United get a result. Um, but the, that second half display was nothing short of embarrassing. Um, I've never seen a team perform like that who are supposed to be fighting for their lives. So passive, spineless, gutless, no quality, no fight, no desire, nothing. Just absolutely nothing. Some of them players are not fit to wear the Leeds United shirt. Um, you know, some of Ellen Ayling at one point in the, the second half. Ayling plays the ball to him, but some of them thinks that the ball's not for him and he just walks away and then it goes out for a throw in. There was a random pass from Verber that which all he had to do was just pass it simple in to McKenney's feet, but it blasts it and it goes out for a throw. And it 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 just seemed it just seemed like we were a beaten team today. Um and obviously Jared Bowen puts them in front in the second half and and he just sat there thinking like what you know I, I said on the preview last night i said it this morning on the stream 
the mentality of this squad has been questioned a number of times this season. Now, I thought that at least today, regardless of the outcome, obviously Leeds have lost the game, right? But I did think, regardless of result, that we'd go out there and we'd show a bit of character, show a bit of fight, fight for every ball, you know, try something in an, in an attacking sense. But we got nothing today. We got about 15, 20 minutes in the first half. We score a goal and then nothing. Absolutely F all. And why is that? You know, because it's not just under Allardyce that this has happened. Leeds United go in front in games and then drop off. Why? We were the better team in the lead up to our goal, in my opinion. We then score when we're on top. Right, good. Go for the jugular. Go for that second goal. Keep the momentum. Keep the pressure on West Ham. But there was nothing. Yes, when Bamford went off, that affected us, I thought, because I thought it was one of Bamford's better performances of late. I thought he held up the ball quite well. He was trying to link others into play, but I felt that he was getting in behind quite a lot, but there was no one there to support him in the box. You know, even Willy Nonto, he came on and really didn't do anything. Somerville came on and did nothing. Aronson came on and did nothing. Matt Rocker, nothing. You know, I thought Adam Forshaw was decent in that midfield. I thought he was doing the basics quite well. I thought Strauch had an okay game at left back. I thought Rodrigo was he was at least trying. He was I thought Ailing was quite poor though in the game. McKenney there nah, hit and miss. Again, they're just <sighs> Big Sam said it, we all said it, it was do or die. Do or die, and we died. It's as simple as that. I, I have I have no words for them. Arguably our biggest game in recent history. And we go out and perform like that. Regardless of the result, yes, the lost. Either way, if you lose it, it's disappointing. And I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. But when you look at it, did any did anyone expect anything less than that? I've questioned the mentality so many times this season. Everton away, Bournemouth away, Fulham. When I went down to Fulham that afternoon, I questioned it. You know, games earlier on in the season, even Southampton away, third, second game of the season, 2 0 up, and we end up drawing. Speaking of points dropped, we've now dropped 25 points from winning positions this season. 25. Even if we had half of that on top of our points, which is what? Like what? Maybe 12 points, call it. 12, 13 points. We'd be safe. We'd be fine. We'd be comfortably mid-table, about 13th or something. I just want to know... What happened at half time against Crystal Palace at home? We were in front on 32 points, about to go 12th in the league. What on earth has happened since then? But this isn't on Big Sam Allardyce, it's not on Carl Robinson, it's not on Robbie Keane. Even some of the players, yeah, I get it. They were spineless and they've been spineless a few times this season. I get that. But it all stems from the top. All stems from those charlatans, from those chances, those idiots that have ran our football club. I'm talking Radrizani, I'm talking Kinnear, and yes, he's no longer at the club, thank God, but I'm talking Victor Orta. From Marcelo Bielsa to Sam Allardyce, in 14 months. Bielsa to Jesse Marsh. 
we were told at the time and we were tricked into thinking, even I were thinking it, oh, it's a smooth transition from Bielsa. It's a similar style of play. Couldn't have been anything more f- further away from Marcelo Bielsa. And what Bielsa did was cloud over what those idiots were doing and how those idiots were running our club. Because, yeah, the promotion season, first season in the Premier League, it was all rosy, wasn't it? Because on the pitch, it was good. But when things on the pitch go bad, you start to realise what's actually going on at the top of your club. The transfers we've made, the decisions we've made, and nothing short of a joke. We're a Premier League club for now. That badge there is only for now. But we ran like a League One club. Simple. And I'm just so gutted, so disappointed that we waited 16 years to get back to the Premier League. First season, we finished ninth. Let that sink in. We were three points off Europe in our first season in the Premier League. And yeah, what happened last season, it wasn't great. But we managed to stay up by the skin of our teeth. That should have been the wake-up call. That should have been the alert. Hey, up. We need to make some changes here. And they just haven't. They've gambled again. They gambled keeping Marsh. They backed a guy that was never going to work out. And like I say, guys, if Big Sam can do the impossible and keep us up next week, if Everton somehow get beat and we somehow beat Tottenham, a rebuild needs to happen. A big rebuild. Even if we go down, like regardless of what happens next week, a reset needs to happen complete from the top to the bottom. Players are going to leave. Players are going to come in. A new manager is going to come in probably. Maybe new ownership will come in. Who knows? But something needs to change. Otherwise, we'll be in the abyss for quite a few years, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it'll be quite 16 years, but if we go down, I think it'll be a few seasons down there. I do. Unless unless we have a plan in place. They need to be preparing now, because it's not in our hands anymore going into next week. It's in Everton's hands. You know, if both teams lose next week, we go down. If both teams win next week, then we go down. And if both teams draw, we go down. So we need to hope that Bournemouth beat Everton at Goodison Park on the final day. It's not happening. It's just not happening in my opinion. And boy, do I hope I'm wrong. If we can stay up next week, the atmosphere inside Ellen Road will be unbelievable. But do I think we're going to stay up now? Did I think we were going to stay up before this game? No. They've not got it in them. And again, I hope they prove me wrong with that. Again, it's at Ellen Road. The crowd will be behind them. So I hope they feed off that. And whatever happens, just go out and hopefully beat Tottenham. Because if it's going to be our final day in the Premier League, let's go out with a win at least. And... I don't know what else I can I can say, guys. That second half display was nothing short of embarrassing. Spineless, gutless, no desire, no fight, no passion, just not arsed in the slightest. Well, if you're not bothered, you can get out of this club at the end of the season. Luke Ayling crying at the away end. Well, your tears are too late, mate. Tears are not going to get you out of this. Performances and fight and desire. Look at Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest 
even if they'd have gone down, they were showing fight. And they've showed fight and it's pay- it's paid off for them. Fair play. Everton will get out of this because they fight for everything. And Goodison Park will affect them in a better way than I think Ellen Road will affect us. I think they'll buckle under the Ellen Road crowd. I hope I'm wrong. I very much hope I'm wrong. Of course I do. I want nothing more than to be in the Premier League again. Because it's better to rebuild in the Premier League than it is in the Championship. But it is what it is. I'm, I'm just... I was resigned to it anyway, but I'm even more resigned to it now. We're all but relegated now, guys. So uh, I'm going to go to Ellen Road next Sunday. I'm going to enjoy it the best that I can. And if we stay up, I will be over the moon. I'll be buzzing. I'll be, it'll be some session. It'll be some drinking session afterwards because I'm off out for a few drinks with some of the guys in the South stand near me after the game. So Hopefully it's a celebratory drink, but I think I think we'll be drowning in sorrows in all honesty, guys. But but yeah, just to summarise, not good at all. We deserve to go down. We're arguably the worst team in the league. I know Southampton have finished bottom, but we're just we're just an absolute shambles from top to bottom, and we deserve everything that we're about to get, in my opinion. So. If you've somehow managed to enjoy this video, guys, please smash a like on it. It really helps get the video out there and get more eyes on the channel. As I say, I'm on the road to 3,000 subscribers. If you could do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, it is free and it'll really help me out. Hit that notification bell, guys, and of course, get all of your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. I will be back tomorrow evening um, for the last say um, live on the channel where I'll be getting all your guys' thoughts and we can have a a therapy session and somehow try and get over what's about to happen um so yeah as i say guys hit that notification bell so that you're aware of when i'm uploading and going live and i'll see you in the next one cheers